Welcome back everyone. Today we will learn about chemical equation. After this lesson, you will be able to identify the compounds formed in the chemical reaction and to complete the chemical equation by balancing. This is a very important topic. Please pay close attention, take note and review if needed. First, we need to learn about the valency of an atom. What is valency of an atom? Valency is the combining power of an atom. Valency of an atom can be derived by determining the grouping of the atom. How to do that? For group 1 and 2, valency is the group number. For group 13 to group 18, valency is 18 minus group number. Please note, valency of an atom does not have the positive or negative symbol, in other words, no plus or minus sign. Let's find out the valency of some common elements. To be able to do that, we need to take a look at the periodic table. Sodium belongs to group 1, so its valency is 1. Calcium belongs to group 2, so its valency is 2. Chlorine belongs to group 17, so its valency is 18 minus 17 equals to 1. Oxygen belongs to group 16, so its valency is 18 minus 16 equals to 2. There are exceptions. Some element can exist in more than one valency form. Iron 2, valency is 2. Iron 3, valency is 3. Copper 1, valency is 1. Copper 2, valency is 2. Beware, when two or more elements combine together as a single entity, we do not consider the combining power as a valency for the new substance. The statements below are wrong and you should not make the same mistake. Next, let's take a look at the chemical formula and name of common cations and anions. Finally, we arrive at the last topic for today, for today, chemical equation. For every chemical equation, you need to first figure out the chemical formulas of the reactants and the products, and then you need to balance the equation. To find out how to write the chemical formula, let's take a look at some examples. Example 1, hydrogen cation, an oxide anion. First, we write the cation on the left, anion on the right. Next, we write the valency for each atom as a subscript. Then, we swap the subscripts and divide by the greatest common factor. Finally, we remove any subscript that is 1. The final result we have is H2O. Isn't it simple? Let's do it one more time. Example 2, silicon cation, an oxide anion. First, we write the cation on the left, anion on the right. Next, we write the valency for each atom as a subscript. Then, we swap the subscripts and divide by the greatest common factor. Finally, we remove any subscript that is 1. The final result we have is SiO2. Now you have mastered the technique to write the chemical formula. Let's see how to derive the name of the chemical formula. Name of the chemical formula will be formed by putting together the chemical name of the cation and the anion. 
All acids have hydrogen cation, and all alkalis have hydroxide anion. Do you still remember the lists of cations and anions? You will have to memorize them. Here are some example chemical formulae and names. Hey, I know there are some smart guys who want to call H2O as dihydrogen monoxide. Well, technically it's correct, but please don't do so. Step 2 of writing the chemical equation is balancing. No atoms are created or destroyed in a chemical reaction. Each side of the chemical equation must represent the same quantity of any particular element. There are several symbols that can be used to represent that chemical reactions have taken place. The single left to right arrow is used to signify reactants on its left and products on its right, and reaction is irreversible. The doodle direction arrow is used to signify that reaction is reversible. Let's take a look at an example. Copper 2 sulfate and iron to produce iron 3 sulfate and copper. Step 1 Formula writing. We have learned this in the previous slides. Please rewind to review if needed. Step 2 Balancing of equation. Let's recall what we have learned in the previous chapter. That's all for today. Thank you for the effort to learn with me. Stay tuned for more interesting lessons. See you next time. Bye.